We're on the road from the city of Donetsk to the front line through a maze of separatist checkpoints. As the Ukrainian army closes in on pro-Russian positions, anxieties are growing. Here in the town of Mikolaevka, people live against a backdrop of war. We're shown the area's only functioning hospital, where civilians and separatist soldiers injured in nearby fighting are being treated. A tank fired a shell and I was hit by the debris. My friend was also badly injured. This man has a large piece of shrapnel embedded in his lower back. Dr. Alexander hopes to remove it, but the risky procedure could leave the man paralyzed. But even here, in the midst of violence, is new life. Mark was born shortly before we arrived. His parents took five hours to drive a perilous 10 kilometers from Slavyansk, a town under constant Ukrainian bombardment. We hope that the army will stop the fighting and that we can go back to Slavyansk and that everything will be quiet. We're afraid to go back there with a child while the killing continues. Whilst filming outside the hospital, a car races towards us carrying separatist fighters. One of the men boards our van and makes us drive to a base even closer to the fighting. We're held under armed guard and forced to wait. We've come to the edge of the town of Mikolaevka, close to a separatist checkpoint where we were held for about an hour. You can probably hear in the background the sound of heavy artillery firing from one direction into a town close to the center of Slavyansk. Uh, locals are leaving very rapidly. They say it's no longer safe to be here. Back in the city of Donetsk, the Red Cross has been gathering vital medical supplies to help hospitals struggling to cope. The Ukrainian president's promised a humanitarian corridor to allow civilians to flee the fighting. But until this promise becomes a reality, the innocent continue to pay the price of war. Neve Barker, Al Jazeera, Mikolaevka.